Welcome back to a closer look. My guest here today is Dr. Caroline Abercrombie. She is the chair of the fundraising planning committee and also a board member, and Ron McCready, who is the cognitive instructor there at Crumley House. And we've been talking about a lot of stuff that, you know, how important, important all of this is, and especially uh, when you don't expect it and someone or yourself undergoes the fact of a brain injury and you're incapacitated. You need that help. And like you were saying, it's very expensive to get that. Yes, sir. It is very expensive and it's overwhelming for the families a lot of times because one, they don't know where to go. Right. You know, if you break your arm, you go to the emergency room, six weeks later, they take the cast off, you're finished. It's not like that with brain injury. It goes on and on and on a lot of times and it, you know, it tears families apart. And like you were saying, uh, you know, if, if you have a, a child, are you going to be able to continue to work to make money to pay for something that is already hard to pay for to begin with? And it really puts everybody in a financial difficulty as well as a stressful, difficult situation. And I'm sure you see it every day. Yes, sir. The, the psychological damage with a brain injury is both for the family and the, and the person suffering the injury. Uh, and, and in some cases, their children also. You oh, know, if they, if they have children, now their, their child effectively no longer has the parent that they've grown to know. And that can be very difficult from the injured person's standpoint. Yeah, and you it's know. hard for, for kids or, that are younger to, to deal with that and to understand it. It is. It's hard for adults to understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the uh, Polynesian Beach Party fundraiser that's going to be going on August the 5th. Yes. And that's a great time for everybody to come out and participate. <laughs> it is. It's always a fun time, and it's actually out in Limestone on the Crumley House grounds, so you get to see the beautiful mountains, and you actually get to see the facility. Um, hopefully you'll be seeing that um, facility we just finished so you can see where a lot of our fundraising does go to is to help expand so we can continue to serve that long waiting list for this region here. We have some fun things planned though. We have some a still band um, coming in and we also have our DJ for some live music and dancing at the end of the night. Some delicious food thanks to some awesome sponsors from the community and a really great live auction and silent auction. Oh, those are always fun and then of course when whenever you've got uh, plenty of food everybody wants to come out and enjoy that right? Yes the dessert table is my favorite. We get some great and awesome like beautiful desserts. They really get creative with the Polynesian theme and there's like an entire corner of the tent that's pretty much artwork that's edible in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Now you uh, you were talking about uh, folks coming out, they can actually see where their money goes when they're out there and say, you know, this is where it's going. Yes, exactly. So we're hoping like the event starts at 530 and if you can get there at the start, we're hoping to kind of golf cart over to the new facility and give tours of the facility so they can see how nice we've been able to make these rooms and accessible for the members, safe but independent living spaces. So they feel like they have their own little piece of home there and you know they can still interact but these are kind of detached they're actual kind of cottages is what we've nicknamed them mm -hmm. and so it does give them that extra bit of independence which I think is really neat for these members that can actually have that. Oh yeah that's incredible too and and if if someone wants a ticket to uh, the Polynesian Beach Party what do they need to do? You can go to crumleyhouse.com or find anyone on our planning committee we have ticket or our board we have tickets ready in our pocket to give you at any time but the easy way, of course, is CrumleyHouse.com. And it's $100, and you, you couldn't buy the experience, I don't think, and, and the help that you're giving other people. Uh, it's just $100 is, is really minute when you come to think about what all has to be done where you are, are concerned, you know. And let's talk about, uh, again, some of, the, some of the programs that you all have. Um, I know, Ron, that, that you were talking about the, the residential program, but what about the respite care uh, that is offered there as well? We, we do have some folks that uh, take advantage of our respite care. We also pro provide some daycare services. Uh, we try to stay primarily in the brain, somebody who has something 
associated with the brain. But we have, uh, we have one respite patient from Russia. Wow. Uh, he, his family, when they go back to Russia, he comes and lives with us for sometimes a couple weeks, sometimes you know, a few months, right. just depending. But he's a hoot. He's, a, he's something else. He's fun to be around. Everybody really likes him. And, uh, so, so we have them globally, uh, I guess you'd say. And we, have, and we have clients from all over the United States that live there, Michigan, Florida, um, you know, as far, uh, as far away really as you could possibly drive that come in a day. We have some people that come upwards of 90 miles for the day program. So wow. it's, there's, there's just, uh, as Dr. Abercrombie alluded to, it, it, there's a huge waiting list and it's just so overwhelming, um, when you have to care for somebody in your home because your home wasn't built for that. So hopefully we can provide that, um, you know, and give some relief to some people here coming up soon. Well, and you were talking about, uh, I was asking you about the equestrian program and you said that you still do some, uh, some of the shows and that sort of thing, right? Uh, we do still have the Crumley House Equestrian Club and they have, uh, shows about six a year typically in the spring they're going on right now uh, they occur on Saturdays we have a beautiful ring and facility uh, you know where they can, right. where they there's bleachers and the whole nine yards so it's uh, it used to be really really big that used to be our biggest fundraiser and the Polynesian party now over the last few years it, somebody told me it's a hundred dollars worth of fun, and the rest goes to the coming <laughs> house. So how about that? So it's uh, it, it it is a really good time, and it is a good cause. And uh, uh, the equestrian uh, therapy program, they did away with that um, for various reasons, but cost was one with the with the. Uh, uh, horses, you know, back when the economy kind of went south a little bit, right. a lot of things were redone, and uh, you know, we just had to make the most effective use of the money that we have. So, uh, consequently, we ended up doing some therapies that were able to help more individuals in a shorter period of time right. so I have to say being on the board that's one thing that has impressed me the most with this board is they are very effective with their use of money and every single purchase is scrutinized and it's been really eye-opening so it's I mean I first got involved with educational experiences and June mm -hmm. Barrett is so infectious <laughs> and so is First Lady Donna Nolan um, but you quickly I mean you meet the members and they're such amazing people and my students too when they come and they volunteer the stories they hear they're impacted and they're, I want to come back next year. I met this person. I heard this story and you know even in our board meetings we sit there and we talk about members and you know laugh about the little personal moments we've had with them. Right. So just to interact with the members alone is worth a hundred dollars to me because they're just such special people. Absolutely and do you have other fundraising events uh, throughout the year that uh, people can take advantage of as well I'm sure? We do. We just finished up jogging for the noggin, the 5K that's actually done out on the grounds as well, which is a beautiful run. A little bit hilly, too much for me. So I was a cheerleader. I was not. I, I helped one of the members finish that end half of the race. That's but, all right. And that's a great one um, as well. And there's a new, there's some educational things that we do funded through grants, helmets and bike safety and things like that, because prevention is honestly the best thing we can do in education. So there's different ways to help out, but honestly, the community is great and they always you know, know how to get a hold of us and donate when they know we're in need. Either one of you, but what message would you like to get out to folks talking about protection, safety, and thinking before you do something that could have an adverse effect on you and on your brain as well? I have a really unique background. I was actually in a surgical internship for a year, so I got to work on a trauma team. And you see these people come in with this injury, and it's such innocent things to where you were going three houses down the road and your toddler wasn't in the car seat and they opened the door and went falling out of the car. And that baby will never be the same. It never had a chance to, I'm just biking down the street. I don't need my helmet. 
and you know someone's not looking when they turn a corner and you know we had a med student before I worked here at ETSU who actually was hit on a bike going to class and you know helmets can make all the difference sometimes so just I know they don't look so cool but prevention <laughs> really is key seat belts car seats and helmets is my biggest thing I think and just being able to stop for just a minute before you get into a vehicle or get on a bicycle or a motorcycle or whatever just that little time can make a big difference well, whether you're going on a short trip or a long trip it only takes a split second exactly. for it to go south on you mm -hmm. so it, and, it, you know, we're not advocating live your life in a bubble <laughs> either because that's no fun. Nobody oh, wants no, to do yeah. that. I mean, everybody likes to have fun Absolutely. and do their things, you know, and outside, especially around here with the beauty of the mountains and the streams. And there's just so much to do that you don't want to, you know, you want to experience that. Right. And occasionally things happen, and, you know, that's what we're here for, I guess you'd say. Right, and so, we, we, just, we just get the message out that, that folks just be careful and, and just stop for a second. It, it doesn't take that long to do that, and it could save your life and an extension of your life as well. I would say if you know someone that you think has a brain injury, give them a little time. You know, everybody's always in such a hurry. And a lot of times uh, somebody who has a brain injury can respond, they just take a little bit longer. And I find that that's one of the, one of the biggest uh, things that I see with families, especially right. when they're new. All right. They cut them off. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. But when you slow down and live life, they help you slow down. Absolutely. And enjoy a conversation. Thank you nice. all for being here today so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for you. having us.